Remember that project I had at the beginning of the year to put lights in my crawl space and try to organize it to see what kind of computer equipment had accumulated over the last 20 years? Well, that project is complete, and I thought I'd take you on a little tour of the space and also do a bit of a post-mortem to try to figure out what worked well and what didn't work so well. So let's take a look at what Jim actually has in his vintage computer crawl space. This whole thing started as a project to add lights to the crawl space just to see what I had. Now, when I had them up, I was overjoyed to see that this was now a usable space, but also horrified that it was in complete disarray. So armed with some latex gloves to protect my hands and knee pads to protect my knees, I began to rearrange the space. Now, one of the challenges of trying to do this is that I did not have room outside of this space to put everything that was in it out, so I had to kind of shuffle this stuff in place. So you'll see throughout this entire time lapse I'm doing things like moving things out of the way, pulling back carpet, evening out the floor, putting back the carpet, and then putting stuff back. Um, another thing I was mindful of when I was doing this rearranging, you'll see that I'm putting monitors underneath the ductwork. This is because the ductwork is low in that portion of the crawl space, uh, to the point where I couldn't put any shelves there, so I decided to put the largest things that didn't necessarily need a shelf in that area. However, once I started building this, I thought shelves indeed would be a good idea, so I went to uh, Menards and purchased plastic shelving. These are uh, four flat pieces of shelving and plastic tubing for about $58, and I ended up purchasing uh, four units of these. The original goal was to just simply line stuff around the edges, as you can see me doing here, but then I thought there's enough room for the shelf, I might as well put it up there, and anything that can fit on the shelf will go on the shelf, and you can see me doing that right here. Probably the only regret I have about this is that I built the shelves on top of monitors already there, and when I was finished they didn't exactly line up, but I'd rather have the density than the appearance at this point. Quick vacuum to get rid of any fluff, dust, and uh, possible little mouse turds, and uh, we're all set. Let me tell you, lifting all these heavy monitors, doing all this work, I think I've inadvertently discovered a new workout for computer nerds. Despite all the work, it was totally worth it, and I'm really happy with how this space turned out. It's clean, it's well lit, and there's room for more stuff that I have. This is not my entire collection, um, but there's room now to put more of my collection in it. But before I do that, I thought I'd do a slow pan around the room and record this for my own posterity, remembering what it was like when it was nice and clean. Now you may be wondering, how did I not know what I had in here? Well, over the last 20 years, my collection, which is not limited to these items, was in multiple places, but the inactive items would go into here and I would rarely pull them back out again. So part of this exercise was trying to figure out what I had. So let's take a look at what I unearthed. Unfortunately, during the filming of this video, my camera broke. And while it is currently away on warranty repair, I will have to continue this using my cell phone. Apologies for the reduction in quality. So, what did I actually find in my crawl space? I have a boxed IBM PS2 Model 25. This is the paper white uh, grayscale VGA monitor. Since I am a fan of all-in-one PC systems, we also have an IBM EduQuest 55 and two more IBM PS2 Model 25s, one color and one uh, also paper white uh, monochrome. Because Trinitron monitors are the only ones that I really love using with VGA. I have at least two of them. These are the same model, uh, one OEM'd from Dell and the other an actual Sony. This is in very specifically the uh, G400. Lots of Macintosh and Apple parts which are now nicely organized into some tubs. Now, this is a generic Nokia screened monitor which I don't really care too much about. Uh, the Dell monitor that is OEM original to my Dell 386SX. We have a PC Junior monitor hiding back there and a Tandy CM5. On top we have an IBM VGA, uh, I believe this is the 8513. Uh, we have a quad chrome CGA TTL RGB monitor, uh, 16 colors. 
It is very heavily yellowed, so that is a project for the future if RetroBright procedures ever become foolproof and standard. An AT&T VGA monitor, uh, two of them actually, that are standard with the AT&T 6300 WGS. Uh, I rescued two of those and I rescued two of their monitors. We now begin a small Apple section. I have two of the Apple composite color monitors uh, and two Apple IIEs. Here is a, I believe the name for this is the Platinum with the additional uh, keypad on the right and uh, a 2E. This is the one I've had the most with a duo disc and I also found the Koala pad for it. Moving on, an Apple II composite monitor. Uh, and this was in a box, and I honestly don't remember where I acquired it. A Tandy CM4 monitor. That you never hear. You usually hear about the CM5 uh, or the CM11, which has a better dot pitch. This is the CM4. Unfortunately, it has an even worse dot pitch than the CM5, so it looks pretty, but uh, you would want to use this sparingly, certainly not with 80 column sharp text applications. Good old Commodore 1084 and uh, a Commodore 1960. This one in particular is for connection with uh, my Amigas. Hiding in there, we have yet another Trinitron flat screen monitor. Uh, that one is Gateway OEM'd. And then hiding way back there is a Tandy. Uh, it's a TTL RGB monitor, and unfortunately I do not remember the model number. Two Macintoshes, one Mac 512, one Mac Classic. We found uh, a Tandy 1000 EX, uh, a Compact Desk Pro 46, which I purchased to see if PCI VGA cards can work on a 486 with a PCI slot. Uh, fun fact, they do not. So that's something you can debate a little later. Uh, lots of systems that we have organized here. Uh, the first a Tandy 1000TX, then a 6300 WGS, a 6312 WGS, another 6300 WGS, uh, and a Dell, an Optiplex 5166, so I'm assuming that, that is a Pentium 166. Also found a, a wonderful five and a quarter inch uh, floppy tray. More systems. This is the Tandy 1000 RLX that I uh, mentioned in a previous video. Uh, then we have a functional but missing drives uh, Optiplex 486, so that would be a 4666 of course. The Dell 316 SX, a 386SX system, one of my favorite systems. Uh, this is another Tandy. Let's see which one this is. This is a Tandy 1000. Um, it is very badly rusted, so that one might go into the donation pile at some point. Another 316SX needing drives. Uh, this is a grid laptop, which uh, has a, uh, if I remember correctly, an, either an orange plasma display or possibly just a regular LCD. Um, that one needs some testing. I do believe it still works. And then here we have yet another Tandy 1000, and it is in wonderful cosmetic condition. We have, hi mom, an IBM 5153 in wonderful cosmetic condition, but it is unfortunately untested. Who knows if it works? And then finally, the last thing of note, my original, still the sole owner of Gateway P5120, which is of course a Pentium at 120 megahertz. It includes both the uh, Epson dual drive unit, which still works, and the CD changer, which still works. It holds three discs. A little frustrating when you have four disc games, like Under a Killing Moon, but uh, it's still nice to have at least three in there. So, overall, a lot of space and a lot of room, and I'm very happy with what's in here. Unfortunately for me, this is probably the cleanest it will be. So let's take a quick look at what it's going to look like for about the next 10 minutes, and then I'm going to start putting even more stuff in here. Now, the most obvious advantage here is that I can see what I have. And the second advantage is that because it's all laid out and spaced out properly, I have easy access to it. I can get to it. In fact, I'm going to run an extension cord in here and in place, test all of the systems to make sure that they still power up. And if they don't, add a little note to them uh, stating that they need repair. There were a couple of secondary advantages of doing this. For one thing, putting down all of these uh, carpet remnants 
and uh, rug, you know, rugs that we weren't using, makes the space kind of nice and quiet. There's no echo in here. And I, you know, despite the cement walls, it's really kind of a nice place to just sort of sit and reflect. Although I guess only a computer person would want to sit and reflect surrounded by all of these systems. The advantage of the shelves for me isn't necessarily organization, it's actually for preservation and longevity. I can't afford a climate-controlled archived space, so this crawl space is the next best thing that I have. A lot of people don't know that uh, concrete and stone can actually retain moisture, and when you have a computer case directly on a concrete floor or up against a concrete wall or on stones or rocks, over time the moisture can wick out of the stone and the concrete onto the bottom of the computer case, whatever's touching it. So you may find yourself utterly surprised to have a system 10 years in storage and then you pull it out and the whole bottom of it is rusted. And I've seen this a lot um, from donations from people who are just cleaning out their basements. So having plastic shelves, which can't rust, uh, and also having them elevated means that hopefully uh, everything in here will be preserved uh, much longer. No project is perfect, so what were some of the downsides of doing this? Uh, well, the first one is I didn't realize just how much physical exertion was needed. Uh, as you can tell from my svelte athletic figure, I'm not exactly in the best of shape. So uh, picking up a computer monitor and moving it only two feet doesn't seem like a big deal. But in the process of doing Towers of Hanoi or Tetris-like rearranging of the room, I did that single monitor movement operation hundreds of times and uh, it got to the point actually where I started to feel out of breath and had to check uh, my pulse and my blood pressure. So if you're an aging vintage computer uh, enthusiast, please keep that in mind before embarking on this kind of project. Other downsides, uh, it's a traditional crawl space which means that despite how nice it looks down here, um, you can see in the corner it's actually uh, cardboard and if you can see and uh, I'll try to put some pictures of what the far end looks like it is rocks it's rocks rocks on top of dirt um, so you know there is somewhat of a moisture fluctuation problem uh, I purchased a thermometer that also had uh, a humidity sensor on it and it keeps track of the ranges and it turns out that the room isn't quite as climate controlled as I thought however it is still well in the realm of being a good place to store things and uh, as I said before with everything not touching moisture I think uh, it's still a great place to, to keep everything uh, preserved another downside of it being built on top of rocks is that uh, the floor is incredibly uneven now I suppose if I were doing this properly, I would have removed absolutely everything from the crawl space, gotten a huge rake and tried to make everything all even with the rocks before putting everything down. But um, that would have uh, doubled the length of the project probably. And uh, honestly, once I had gotten the lights in here and I started to make some progress, I just was in a mad finish to complete the project and see how everything looked. So yes, some of the floor here is a little uneven, but um, it's not like anybody's going to set up a home office in here and try to do extensive work, so I'm okay with the unlevel floor. Another disadvantage, uh, which should be fairly obvious, is that I'm six foot two, and even sitting, I run the risk of banging my head. So this is not somewhere uh, I would like to spend a lot of time. Now, fun fact, uh, my 20-year-old son, Max, came in here when it was all finished, and he thought this would be a great place to hang out because of the rug and the carpet remnants it's actually very quiet in here and uh, he asked me legitimately could i put up an uh, an air mattress and a pillow so he could chill out in here um i don't think he fully understands uh crawl spaces can occasionally have critters uh even mice um i'm not going to be doing that so what's the number one thing vintage computer collectors never have enough of well, if you said computers, you're probably right. If you said time or money, you're also right. But in my case, it's space. And I hope that this little introduction to how I took a portion of my home and turned it into more usable space, practical space, for my vintage computer collection was insightful or hopefully at least slightly entertaining. 
My personal goal for my collection has been for it to be accessible, categorized, and uh, most importantly, out of the living areas of the home, because I do share my home with my family. So this fits the bill.